Welcome to Comics Now. It's Ryan here, and this week in Comics Now, we've been reading a lot of comics, and there are some uh, interesting other things to talk about and to show you, so let's get right to it. So comics I've been enjoying this week, well, it was my turn to pick which comic to cover on our podcast. Uh, If you haven't listened to that episode, please find it on ComicsNow.com or in your favorite podcast provider. We talked about The Punisher Number 2 from Matthew Rosenberg, Zyman Kudransky, Antonio Fabella and Corey Pettit. Um, the Punisher book right now is, it's pretty simple, but it's pretty darn good too. So the uh, artwork in the book, very, uh, very realistic looking. It really makes the, really makes the action feel particularly intense and, uh, and true to life. And uh, I really appreciate that the sorts of questions that a Punisher story usually makes you ask about what kind of person he is, whether or not he's a good guy or a bad guy, those questions are automatically asked just by the nature of the, the nature of the character, but Rosenberg doesn't answer those questions for us. We draw our own conclusions, and it's a very well done book so far in total. And issue number two, in particular, uh, is is definitely the better of the two issues that uh, that have been released. So it's not too late to jump onto this series with uh, only two issues released at this point. So if you are not already reading the Punisher go ahead and start picking it up. It is a really, really good book. I also enjoyed this week Batman Kings of Fear. And by the way, if you have listened to the podcast and this is a bit repetitious for you, I do apologize. But I have a feeling we have some folks checking out the channel here who aren't looking at the podcast. And, you know, maybe I'll drop a few unique nuggets of information here that I didn't over there. So anyway, yes, Batman Kings of Fear. I'm a huge fan of Kelly Jones. If you guys are not DC Comics fans already, this is going to be foreign to you because I don't I don't think Jones has done a lot of work on Marvel characters. I think he's done some, but he's really really well known for any time that he's drawn Batman. And there's been some uh, unique stories like uh, I think Red Rain was one of them. Uh, Batman Dracula I think is another one of them. He's really famous for his uh, Bane-breaking Batman cover to one of the Nightfall books. And you see that image on uh, some of the, the Nightfall collections that have been released since the Nightfall saga in the 90s. He's really well known for that. He's also really well known for drawing kind of weird-looking characters sometimes. He can draw very haunting creepy kind of Batman and Batman's villains, but he also can draw Batman looking kind of ridiculous. Which, you know, a guy dressed up as a bat can look kind of ridiculous, and he kind of exaggerates some of that. But I I used to hate his style when I first encountered it, but I've actually come to love it. It, uh, It's nice to laugh at when he's doing something silly with it. And then when he decides to take things in a really dark direction, you're kind of faced with the, the, the duality of Batman, that in concept, a guy dressing up like a bat... Is kind of ridiculous, and in certain visual lights, he would look ridiculous. But at the same time, he is a creature of the night, and if he's obscured in shadow and you don't know exactly what you're looking at, he would be pretty terrifying. So, um, all of that to say, the main thing I like in Batman Kings of Fear, which also had its second issue come out this week, is the artwork of Kelly Jones. Now, the writing in this book is actually pretty good as well. It is not Kelly Jones's frequent, or at least most well-known collaborator, uh, Doug Mensch. Um, and of course, even though we just talked about it on the podcast, I can't remember who the writer is. Uh, but um, it's still, it's written very well. Uh, it's different than a typical uh, Jones and Mensch story, so if you don't like the way that Mensch writes, which there are a number of people that feel that way, then this is this is a bit different, so maybe you'll enjoy that more. Uh, Jones usually is colored in most of his most famous work by Michelle Madsen, and she colors him here as well, and uh, it, it looks outstanding. His characters are cool, his architecture is amazing, there are some really imaginative shots uh, in the in the book as well, and it's uh, it's it's a neat book. It's it's interesting, and it's I, I like it. Uh, Venom First Host. You guys have seen me talk about this book before. That wrapped up this week with its fifth issue, and I really enjoyed the conclusion. Uh, it's maybe the story has some consequence. Maybe some of the things that happen at the end will will become prominent features, or at least 
actual features of mainline continuity. But uh, even if they don't, I thought it was just a really interesting self-contained story. Venom going on a space adventure with uh, Kree and Skrulls involved. And I don't know. It, I just, I really enjoyed it. Loved seeing Bagley's art again. Costa and Bagley are a great team. So really enjoyed First Host. A little bit sad that it's over. Having a having a weekly Venom book for uh, for five weeks there was really, really cool. And a weekly book that was written, drawn, everything by the same creative team. I uh, I really liked that. It was a special thing. So, hey, there's a fly flying around my nose. Uh, that's not annoying at all. <laughs> so, uh, you know, those are the books that I really stick out to me this week that I enjoyed. Action Comics 1003, I did enjoy as well. I've been a bit cold on most of Bendis' Superman-related output. I did not love Man of Steel. I, I'm, I'm on the fence about Superman right now. Um, over in the actual Superman title, the Earth is in the Phantom Zone, and so maybe some of the weird character writing that Bendis is doing, particularly on a character like Martian Manhunter, one of my favorites, um, maybe some of that weird character writing can be explained by the fact that, that these characters are in the Phantom Zone and it's playing with their minds. I hope so. Anyway, Action Comics... I think has been has been really really good. It's focusing a lot on the the goings on in Metropolis. Yes, Superman appears in the costume from time to time, but this is more about the Clark side of things, which is interesting that the book called Action Comics kind of well anyway uh, has a little bit less action, um, but it's very very interesting, very well written. Uh, I love Bendis's Clark. I love all of the other characters. We get great stuff from Jimmy Olsen, great stuff from The Chief. And um, yeah, it's just a really enjoyable book. And this particular issue had some really good tension at times. I won't spoil where that tension comes from. But very, very well done. This this issue was, uh, instead of drawn, being drawn by uh, Patrick Gleason, who's been uh, drawing the other issues, it uh, is drawn by Yannick Paquette, uh, colored by his very frequent collaborator, I don't think I've ever actually seen him colored by anybody else, Nathan Fairbairn, and uh, the artwork really looks excellent in here. My favorite shot, actually, is uh, is probably one of Clark just standing. It's kind of a, a somewhat distant shot, looking at Jimmy sleeping at his desk. And uh, just great artwork, great storytelling. Uh, it all looks really good, and it's been reading really well, too. Uh, I also finished up this week catching up on a book from Boom that I really, really, really love, but stopped reading after a few issues because there's just too many comics. And that book is Coda by Simon Spurrier, Matthias Bergera. Uh, this book is expertly written. The uh, The main character, the bard, hmm, uh, or hum, or whatever Spurrier is actually calling him, um, very, very compelling character. He is a uh, a morally muddy character, and that always makes for that always makes for an interesting thing. We start to weigh in our heads whether or not this character's muddiness is uh, <laughs> is worth it. Um, is he ultimately is he ultimately a, a good guy? Is he ultimately a bad guy? And maybe what Spurrier is trying to tell us is that uh, there is not purity, and that people are all mixed. And to some extent, that's true. But um, regardless, this book is very interesting. Uh, Bergera's artwork is gorgeous. Um, at first, it might be a little intimidating because it can seem kind of busy and uh, just seems at times busy to the point that it's a little bit less distinct. If you have the opportunity to read this in print, I really would encourage you to do that. The trade is out now or very soon. It uh, collects, I believe, the first four issues. And uh, it's a fantastic book. I'm glad that Jay kept reading it because he, he told me that it had continued to do really well, maybe even got a bit better. And he encouraged me to read the trade, so I did. And uh, guys, it, it really is a great series. Really nice twist at the end of the first arc. So uh, do yourselves a favor. Check that out. Uh, still have not finished The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus, but I am just uh, two or three issues from the end. Uh, I read that really, really well-known well-known moment, uh, I think it was in 33, uh, where uh, Spider-Man is caught under some wreckage, and he's got to will himself to get this wreckage off of him. Aunt May is ill in the hospital with some radiation poisoning, a particle of radiation that uh, Peter thinks she probably got way back when she received a blood transfusion from him. 
and uh, he's trying to get this uh, this cure over to uh, Kurt Connors, who's going to uh, put it in some form that can be beneficial to Aunt May. And like I said, famous moment, famous Steve Ditko art. Peter is uh, he wills himself to to just push this enormous amount of wreckage off of himself and and get out and get free. And then he goes berserk and beats a whole bunch of people up, and that's really cool too. So anyway, those are the books that I'm reading. What are you guys reading? Let us know in the comments. Shoot us an email at comicsnowcast at gmail.com. Yell at us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, etc., etc., etc. Comics are not the only thing comics-related that I've been interested in this week. I forgot to show you guys last week after Keystone Comic Con the coolest thing that I picked up at the show. It's this guy. Look at that thing. So there is this company called Mana Tees, and they basically make uh, superhero shirts that are based on aquatic creatures. So this is a walrus wolverine, but they have actual manatees in some of the pictures and other creatures as well. All of their stuff looks absolutely fantastic. So uh, you guys should definitely look them up and uh, show them some love. Uh, you know, pick up one or more of their shirts. I think uh, they said they're going to be at New York as well. And when I'm at New York on Thursday, I'm probably going to be buying another one of their shirts because they're all amazing. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, got a great uh, new Deadpool statue from Diamond Select. Uh, you can't see it behind me right now, but I'll throw the pictures up right here. And uh, this guy, I'm getting ready to do the review for him. And uh, he is, I think, the same scale, if not slightly smaller than the Deadpool statue that I already have. But uh, this one's just hilarious. I mean, look at that. He's got bunny slippers. He's crushing a chimichanga truck. Um, doing the finger guns. Pew, pew, pew. So it's it's cool. I, I'm not a huge fan of Deadpool in terms of uh, popular media. I uh, haven't seen the movies. Don't plan on it. I'm just not into deliberate raunch and stuff like that. Um, I, I've read a few Deadpool comics, some of which I liked. But I, overall, I don't... I don't love the representations of him that I've encountered. However, he is a cool-looking character. He is funny. Uh, there's there's always at least something funny in, in, in Deadpool stuff that you see. And uh, I, I really like this statue from Diamond probably even more than the other one because it captures more of Deadpool's charm. Uh, the, the other statue, as you can see, it's, uh, it's cool. It's Deadpool. He's... He's got the look, he's got pouches, he's got other things that could be kind of funny, but, you know, if you if you don't know who he is, it could just look like an interesting ninja character charging at you with swords. It's cooler than it is funny, and Deadpool can be cool, but Deadpool is primarily funny. And so this new one, I think, just captures who Deadpool is quite a bit better, and, uh, and I really, really like it. Well, guys, that's it for me for this week. And I uh, hope you guys are having a great one. Hope you picked up lots of great comics at the store on Wednesday. Uh, again, let us know what you're reading. Let us know if there's something that you'd like to see us talk about here on the show uh, or on our podcast or write about on comicsnow.com. We would love to connect with you guys. We want to know who's out there. We want to know what you guys are enjoying about what we're doing so we can give you more of it. Uh, so anyway, until next week... I'm Brian Warshaw, and this is Comics Now.